Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I've had so much resistance to come up to filming this video, and I feel like it's because there's definitely something in it that maybe I'm resisting, or it's like it's really important. It's really effing important for all of us. So um, I literally like everything just feels really chaotic, but part of being able to fly energetically and being a magician is being able to see through the chaos and the illusion like right now i understand that all of the chaos quote unquote that i'm experiencing is happening internally there is no chaos in the world i can and i can access peace whenever i want to so this is like the the dragon energy which can like being able to energetically fly, which is like being able to access different states of consciousness very, very quickly. So not being weighed down and not feeling like, okay, I have to like walk along and trudge along. It's just literally like, think about the energy of flight. It's like light, it's and it, like it's full of energy. It's like flying from one place to another relatively easily. It's just being able to like hop. So I'm gonna access my powers of being able to access different states of consciousness very quickly. Um, and I can feel it already. See, I'm like lightning. It's beautiful. Okay. The concept that I want to talk about this morning really quickly, because I'm going to training in like 25 minutes, but it's this, it won't take that long. The concept of free will, right? So we, oh man. Okay. this came through, I was channeling a whole bunch of stuff the other day, and this came through around free will. I'm going to read it to you. It's like, it's a piece, but it's not a finished piece. It's just a, like the pieces of a piece. And um, yeah, I'm going to read it to you and then we're going to unpack it. But basically, we've been thinking about this concept of free will really wrong. Like the way that we or like it's time for an evolution in our understanding of what free will is. So if we think about how we've been, I'm just going to fucking read it. Okay. We've been thinking of free will in the wrong way like petulant, afraid teenagers. We've been thinking of free will as a way to shirk our divine knowing and responsibility. A gift we have been given, we think, to escape the autocratic reign of who or what we imagine seeks to control us, to avoid the will of the divine. But free will is not a get out of jail free card. It is a divine, power that we have to use our will and turn it toward freedom. So we have to use the power of our will and turn it toward freedom. It should really be called the power of will to freedom. I'm just reminded of that part in Bring It On where the cheer captain of the Clovers is like, really? They should call us inspiration leaders. Like that's what it is. And this is what I feel like. I'm like, really it should be called the power of the will to freedom because that's what that's what it really is <laughs> i love that it's very cool um to direct the power of our will toward freedom we've been using it to ignore the god within ourselves and of course with our current level of consciousness viewing ourselves as powerless children why wouldn't we when really we should be using it to align ourselves with the will of the divine to chart a course of freedom for ourselves and the world i'll do that bit maybe in a little bit so if we think of like petulant children, right? Like as where we're at in the evolution of consciousness of humanity, where like 99% of the population is, we're teenagers, right? Like we haven't necessarily, a lot of us, a lot of you, haven't been able to advance beyond or just like haven't yet. It's like not a, a question of ability. Of course we can, um, just hasn't, you just, I don't know, we just haven't for whatever reason. Um, we just haven't yet. It's like a growth process and a journey and a stage but of course like if you think about teenagers teenagers just want to rebel against what they perceive as like trying to control them so if we have this perception of like the will of the divine or life as wanting as something that wants to control us which it can like let's be real it often appears like that like often we'll experience circumstances or i've like oh my god i'm the hundred percent this has happened so much to me where i'm like this isn't fair. Like that was my like motto for so long. I just, this, all I could hear in my head was like, this isn't fair. Like life, why are you doing this to me? Why do I feel like I'm stuck in a box? Why can't I get out of this town? Why can't I make more money? Why do I have to like sacrifice so much of my life to write this book? Like 
all of these things. Like it's just, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. That was like my, my thought process for a really long time. And with maturity and with um, not time, because I don't think time really has to play a factor. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, I don't think. But like with maturity and development, I've learned and comes this awareness that actually everything is working out for my highest good. And those moments where it felt like I was stuck, I was actually just, there were things that I was being shown that I needed to see in order to move forward in a way that I was like more well-rounded, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, and also just, I needed to fucking change my relationship with life. Like if I'm going through life being like, this is unfair and life, this is, I'm very displeased with this. What kind of life experience is that? Right? Like, it's like, it's not the truth one. And it's not like, it's just not fun. It's like, oh, it's awful. It's terrible. Uh, <clears throat> so more specific. Okay. Living in this house is one like really key example. So this is like being in this town has been quite like challenging for me. And when I first got here, I was like, I felt like I was locked in a tiny little room. Like I honestly felt like I was locked in a prison cell, had four walls and like a door with a bar over it. And I was like, oh my fucking God. And I spent so long, like literally like banging on the side of the doors being like, let me out. And then trying to like ram the doors. Like if you imagine a character, like a cartoon character in your head, like with a battering ram right now, that was me. Like literally trying everything to escape. And it wasn't until I think I had this vision or I just had this like, oh fuck, okay, I'm exhausted. I can't do this. Of that I realized like I just sat down metaphorically and a lot physically, slumped my back against the wall and like slumped down. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna go inward. I'm going to remember and then I'm going to create from there because if there is, if I'm perceiving that I'm in a jail cell, it means that like there's, you know, there's prison bars in my mind and I know that they're not real, but they're feeling really real right now. So my work is this, it is like sit down, slump against the wall, sit down, close my fucking eyes and find a way to recreate the world and the mind inside my head and regenerate and grow some new shit. So that when I open my eyes, I'm no longer in prison anymore. I can open the fucking door and walk out. Or I wake up and I open my eyes and I'm in a completely new realm, right? This, that is the power that we have when I talk about creating your own reality. That is the power that we actually have to be able to create what it is that we see and experience. If you're feeling like you're in a prison cell, you're not actually in a, unless you're actually in a prison cell, in which case, hello, and I love you. And oh my God, prisons are like... I just, prisons are incredible and just like them, not incredible, but like, I believe that prisons are one of the greatest untapped resources of creative potential on the planet. Like that is just, you want to like solve all those problems, like go and talk to the people who are in prison. Um, yeah, wild. And they're like, that's why they're there. Cause like, yeah, yeah, wild. Um, the world wasn't ready for you yet. And the world's getting ready for you. All of you. Um, okay. And you weren't ready for you. And now you're ready for you. Gotta get ready for you. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. It's like, it's, it's using... So if you're a teenager and if you're freaking out and you're like, oh my God, life is like boxing me and life's put me in a jail cell, then like, on, like you've got to take responsibility for the fact that that's your perspective. Regardless of how conditioned you've been to experience that perspective, it's your perspective now. What are you going to do with it? Are you going to change it? Are you going to sit like bang against the wall like a little child? Um, or are you going to actually like, yeah, sit down, recreate something new and then walk out of prison with like knowing your freedom and knowing you're actually fucking free. Um, and also like, yeah, so this idea of free will, when we are using it as like a get out of jail free card and like, oh, well, God gave me free will. You're missing the fucking point. Like you're missing the point. We need to use it as like a way to like pivot um, our will, the will that we have to align ourselves with the will of the divine within us. So it's like, rather than resisting, so my divinity is like bursting out. My divinity is like, go do this, go write this book, go talk to that person, go have this conversation, go have sex with them. Like, like, go, like my divinity is like this. And then like the free will part is like, yeah, no, I've got free will. I don't have to fucking do that. You don't obviously, but it's going to serve you. It's going to be a lot more effective for you to use the will, the power of your free will, your will to align yourself with those desires, not, not even desires, they're like directions. 
Um, it seems like exactly what they are. They're very, very specific directions um, that are pointing you towards something. I don't fucking know. Could be anything, literally anything. Um, yeah, so start like thinking of free will as this like, I don't know, this escape path or this, oh, thank God I've got free will. I can do whatever I want. Um, like, yes, but also like you're just fucking throwing away an incredible gift because you could be using it to, yeah, the freedom, like will yourself to freedom. <laughs> Seriously, like the things that are coming out of you are your, like your path to freedom. They're either going to show you your chains or they're going to help you like alchemize whatever um, is keeping you stuck and trapped. So for example, oh, nah, I'm going to end it here because it's, it's otherwise it's going to get too convoluted. But if you want to know more, come and do God School or whatever flagship programming I'm offering at the like program. Oh, programming. Interesting. It is like a, it's a re... I'm usually like so anti-programming because I know that any kind of like program is a program coming from outside of you, appearing to come from outside of you. And really, this is an era of like deprogramming and defragging our consciousness. Wild. Anyway, literally channel the power, I was going to say force, not force, the power of your will towards freedom, toward your desire, toward those little whispers that are saying like, do this, do that, do that, toward like, like be willing to sacrifice like comfort and safety and security and the illusion of all of those things because they are illusions and in return, you receive truth and beauty and freedom and euphoria. And so use the power of your will to direct yourself towards euphoria and towards freedom because it is a better use of our internal resources. That's what it is. Um, yeah. As a warrior, as a queen, you have these incredible internal resources and, you know, you can use them. You can squander them. Absolutely. You know, 99% of the people in the world right now are squandering their internal resources or using them for shadow pursuits. So like using, for example, using like your ability to rally people around a cause, using that to like encourage support for your victim mentality. So like getting everyone to like buy into your victim story about how you have depression or anxiety or whatever like flip that around and that becomes an incredible ability to speak to the, like speak to people and get them excited for something, which is like an incredible resource when you want to build a vision or like a dream or bring that the washing's finished. So I can hear this like beeping. Um, but if you want to like bring a dream to life, then yeah, that's an incredible ability to have that resource resourcefulness and that resource to be able to talk to people and, you know, engage people in something incredible. Um, even right now I'm like speaking to you guys and I'm like, come on, like believe in yourself. I'm encouraging you around something. I'm encouraging you toward freedom, right? I can be, I could be sitting here encouraging you towards something else. Um, if I was in shadow, but I'm not always. Okay. I'm going to work on this post and I'm going to probably post it on Instagram or Facebook, probably both. Um, that's all. I've got my mom's 60th birthday this weekend, so we're going to party. I did a TikTok before and there was a carton of Coronas in the background. And I was like, lol, this isn't sponsored by Corona, but we are um, having a party this weekend. So there's quite a bit of alcohol. There's a lot of tequila over there. Alcohol in the house and we're renting a house and it's going to be really fun. And I'm at a season at the moment where I'm very much like, yeah, just continuously like sacrificing, like, yeah, sacrificing the shadow illusions of like safety and security and comfort and and like a plan like having a, a really certain like plan and just all in favor of like what wants to come out of me now oh it's wild it's so fucking wild all right i love you i'm gonna go train um have the most beautiful day ever and i will see you in my next video leave a comment below if you want to bye loves